G'day guys, uh, Adam Kogan here for SSW TV and I am here on the Gold Coast at Ignite and I have cornered Jacob Bradford who runs NDC in Oslo and London and now NDC in Australia. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, you know what we're up for here, don't you? We're going, I'm going to be interviewing you on Troy Hunt's blog post and I want to, uh, like, I'm really interested because Troy Hunt wrote a blog post and it's called 10 Ways for a conference to upset their speakers. And basically, he's doing it from the speaker point of view, and uh, you're on the other side. Um, have you read the blog post? I definitely have, yeah. Okay, all right, cool. So, um, before I get on to those points, uh, you run a conference, and it's a very cool conference. I've spoken at lots of conferences, and it's a fun one. Uh, what, are, what are some of the things that um, speakers do that upset conference organizers? Like, are they un, unprepared? They turn up drunk. Do they do any of these things? I couldn't really noise? say. Most of our speakers do, you know, they show up on time, they present on time, you know, they do what they're supposed to do. So as long as they're, they make their way to the conference and present their talk, right. and it's the actual talk that they said they would do, mm. then, then, then we're happy. So no real dramas. I couldn't okay, have right. no story to... I wish I could give you like a super <laughs> exciting story, but I'm sorry. Well, I have a few, I have a few super exciting stories from uh, Tekken in the US. But anyway, we won't go into that. Um, one thing that he doesn't call out, and I do want to mention it, he doesn't complain about food. But one of the things that I noticed that is different to yours, and I'm not sure if you know, but the way that you do your food at your conference is completely different to all the other conferences. It's just continual and it's, uh, it's healthy. There's an ice cream machine unlimited, you know, there's some <laughs> yeah. fun things. Is that, uh, is that just natural or is that part of the, the plan? Yeah, definitely it's part of the plan. I mean, we, we put a lot of effort into the food. We have to the level of food that we have has to be really, really great. So uh, we just figured out if we, if we keep the food stations open, you can eat whenever you want. So that's one less thing to worry about. So not having to queue up for lunch and so you actually can have what you want to have for lunch. If you want to have a burger at 10 o'clock, that's up to you, right? And just means that you can spend more time having interesting conversations and you know, not, not worry about food. Right, cool. So you, you run at the same events as other places, but you just tell them, hey, just keep the food everywhere. We spend a lot of time working with the, with the caterers or whoever's doing the food right. just to make them understand that it's not gonna, people don't eat more just because they can eat whenever they want. Right. They've got that. You're going to eat the same amount, but you're not going to eat in those. Well, most people have a time, so they eat lunches around 12, between 12 and 1 anyway. But um, it's just more convenient and less queuing. Ah. I mean, that's the big thing. You've got 2,000 people. Uh, all needs to eat. If, if, there's, if there's only you know, one time slot, there's a lot of queuing, a lot of time wasted on just standing in line and... Right. You know, I, did, I actually didn't even consciously notice it the first year that I spoke at your event because it just happened and then it was, you start noticing over time, oh yeah, this keeps happening here but not at other yeah. events. And what happens is people will grab food and you'll have interesting conversations eating, right? Yeah. Like you're used to in, in uh, like I said, normal life, right? Excellent. So let me go through the 10 points. Troy's first one is he says, I hate it when people force a slide template on the presenter. Yeah. So he's basically saying, well, the first thing is, I like my look and feel. I don't want the conference logo stuck on. And you know, then he goes to another point about the slide template. Hmm. Uh, what's your position? Well, on that? I would just agree with Troy. Hmm. You know, why, why would you force that on anyone? You don't care people about People know branding? they're at NDC, so why would you have a you know the NDC's logo there, they're in <laughs> they're at right. the event, already got their tickets. And we do record all the, all the talks obviously, and we do put our logos on the recordings. So we, we don't see any reason that why we should. So I'll tell you something interesting. Uh, Adam Stevenson and Duncan Hunter just presented here at Ignite, and they did their slides in uh, Google Slides. Yeah. And they do it on the web, and that's how they edit it. Uh, I'm a PowerPoint guy. But uh, when they turned up here, they had to convert it to PowerPoint. Yeah. It took them one day for each one to com convert it, add all the slides. They had about, a, I think about 120 slides. That was two days gone where they weren't just hanging around doing stuff. Yeah. You know, crazy painful. So I'm going to agree with Troy on most of these, uh, <laughs> most of these points probably. Uh, and, and actually, I'll tell you one, one other thing. Once they got it done and they gave it to, you know, the PowerPoint Nazi guy who goes through it and checks it, they had these little indicators that say, hey, 
Duncan, you do that slide. Steve-O, you do this slide. Yeah. Now they put their logo on, but they don't, they don't understand that there's some meaning in those little um, secret icons. And uh, they, they, just, yeah. they just got missed and moved. And then the guys had to kind of fix of that course, up again. Yeah, like that. So, so maybe the reason we, we don't have a PowerPoint guy. Right. If we had the PowerPoint guy, we would do it. <laughs> okay, the second one. He says, I don't like asking, I don't like being asked for um, giving my slides in advance. What's your yeah. position on that? No, we don't see a reason why we should see that. And we wouldn't read them anyway, so. Right. You know, go present whatever you present, and that's. Okay. Just, just do a good talk on whatever you're supposed to be talking about. So. Well, I'll tell you, I disagree with Troy on this one. Okay. And I'll tell you, I come from another angle. Like, of course I agree with him because I typically do my PowerPoint the day before. So I, I, you know, I use the latest technologies, I don't want to do any builds. And I do, like I'm thinking about it, but I don't actually get my act together. Mm. I wish I did get my act together two, two months early and I do get annoyed when they ask me, but um, when uh, like our company SSW run like an uh, event and we like Christmas, Christmas events where we all go away, I like the guys to submit their PowerPoints before and I go through and I question them because I want to you know, add value. Um, so I don't know if I completely disagree with him on that, but anyway. Yeah. So you know what's interesting about Troy is when he's forced to give PowerPoints early, he just says, I submit anything or, or I've started to go the other direction where now I submit nothing. I just say, there's my slide. Hello, it's Troy Hunt. And, and he does nothing based on PowerPoints anymore mm. because of this requirement, which is yeah. really sad. Anyway, let me move on to his number four. Screens that are only 4.3 and all these other AV deficiencies. Um, he says, I hate it if I turn up and they support the old format of 4.3 instead of the new format of 16 by 9, the wider format. Yeah. What's your position on that? Well, we, we, we use uh, professional companies that do the AV for us and on the recordings and everything, so they will always be updated on that, whatever's the newest, right? And all the formats and just make them support everything. Okay. So it's as easy as that. Yep. It's not, not an issue I even think about. Okay, cool. Uh, it's happened to me a few times, but uh, you know, all it does is put a big black thing at the top and the bottom. Yeah. I don't mind too much. It doesn't worry me too much, but yeah, I do prefer the newer stuff. Number five, he says, I hate badly prepared rooms. And he's talking about when they give you a fixed mic and um, you know, they, you know, uh, or they have a lectern there and it's got the mic there or they give you a handheld. Yeah. What's your position on that one? Well, obviously having a handheld only wouldn't be good for, uh, for coding presentations, no. right? Like, so that just goes without saying. So everybody gets lapel mics? We, we've got handheld, we've got, uh, you know, these smaller mics, we've got a set of different stuff. So we use professional companies to do this, right? So right. We, we don't do that ourselves. Right. We don't uh, pretend that we are, you know, AV company. That's not what we do, we run conferences. And, I think this one takes a little bit of experience. Uh, I turned up to a session yesterday and the AV guy handed me a handheld mic. Now if I didn't know, if I just, it was my first session, I'd, I'd just take it, but obviously you can't code and you have other problems with this. Yeah. So I just say, no, no, no I want a lapel mic, but the, you know. So that was probably the first talk of the, of the, of the whole week, I guess. No, it wasn't. Like, was he, he's been well, doing that for every talk. I don't know. <laughs> every time he gets turned down, so I can't do coding. <laughs> so the next one, number six, conference laptops are usually painful. He says, look, give the choice. Um, you know, uh, look, I understand that conferences want to use their own laptop often because that laptop has been tested. Uh, I've, I've had problems myself. I've turned up with a brand new Surface Book yeah. with a mini HDMI, mini um, DVI mm. and instead of just the normal HDMI port and I've had dramas. Yeah. What's your position on, you, on con that might laptops? happen. You might have some issues if you bring your own machine but I think you'll have more issues using a conference laptop to be honest and who's going to check that, who's going to set that up. We don't have the PowerPoint guy, we don't have the guy who reads through all the PowerPoints you know and we don't have a guy who sets up a machine for every speaker right so it's also logistics for us it's just to be honest easier for us if you bring your own machine and make sure it works. Mm. And, and our speakers are professional, so they want to give a good, a good presentation. So they're not, going to, they're not going to show up with a machine that's not going to work. Or if you do that once, you know, you won't do it again. <laughs> right, right. Okay. 
So you don't think that, that you should have a laptop there as a backup in case? We do. Have, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of backup uh, laptops, right? From and, other speakers. And from other speakers as well. So if you, if you need a hand, if you need help, like your machine crashed, uh, there's plenty of speakers that will help you out. As long as they you turn know. up early well, enough to diagnose the problem. Mm. Usually, sir. You know, writing, doing code demos on your own laptop is hard, hard enough. Yeah. When you do it on somebody else's computer, it's so much harder. Honestly, doing anything on somebody else's computer is hard. Yes. You know, I never want to touch someone else's computer. <laughs> I prefer. That's right. Prefer Especially using Lenovo's own. with their function key and control yeah, key it, backwards. Yeah. Next, next whinge. I hate it when they don't cover T and E. It's a massive no-no. Yeah, I can see how some conferences won't do that if it's a community-driven, you know, non-profit conference. Obviously, have to keep costs low, but that's every conference is different. So we're definitely, we, we cover always T&E for all speakers. If they're pre-booked or if it's from the call for papers, that's part of what we do. So every conference is different. And obviously from a speaker point of view, it's never going to be better not having T&E covered. So I see, I see why I put that one down. Right, okay. <laughs> Next one. Uh, number eight, bad hotels are bad. What's, uh, what's your position on that? Well, I would have to agree with my bad hotels are bad. We use the hotels that are closest to the venue usually, and they're usually good hotels, right? right. So we've been in the same venue in, in Oslo for our, like eight years, right? We've had the Radisson, we had the Radisson and the Clarion, they're both really nice hotels. We've got the Hilton in Sydney, which is, you know, one of the best hotels, if not the best hotels, hotel in Sydney. What's London like? Uh, London, we've got the A-Loft right next to the venue, so it's just, it's so convenient, you know, it's... And smaller. It's right there. It's a small hotel, a cozy hotel, but it's really nice. Right. Yeah, well, you've got to have a, a decent, a decent hotel room with a desk that you can, can do your work at, right? So, you can prepare for Microsoft your Microsoft events, uh, typically, uh, they will ask you to share a, share a room. Um, not when you're speaking, when you're just attending, like the MVP summits or the yeah, regional yeah, sure. director summits, some of those, yeah. they will say. I actually, um, I, I enjoy sharing a room with another speaker. Some yeah. people don't. Uh, I've got to tell you that there is a massive difference between sharing a room with someone that you don't know when you're presenting and when you're not. When you're not presenting, you don't really care. You just, you know, you're not going to impact them. But if you're presenting, typically I start pretty late the day before. And if you're in a room without, with someone you don't know, it's a bit of a bigger deal in that scenario. Oh, I didn't know that that was the... You, you can share a room with somebody you don't know? Yeah, you can. Yeah, the MVP, oh. the MVP oh, wow. summits and the regional director summits, yeah. Wow. Well, obviously, we could never ask people to share a room with someone they don't know, but... Um, flights. He says, not allowing me to arrange my own flights. What's the story there? You can arrange your own flights with us, but, uh, but obviously there's a price issue, so... Uh, we usually let speakers know that this is... You know, we found a ticket at this cost. If you want to book your own flights, this is what we'll cover. If you want to have a business class ticket or, you know, other days, whatever airline that you prefer, you can do so, but we'll only cover a certain amount of money. Because we've got 150 speakers. Right. You know, so if you're double your flight cost, that's, it's like a make it or break it for the conference, really. So flights, keeping flights cost uh, reasonable is, is, is key for, for the conference. Right. So. Yeah, but that's, I used to want the conference to organize flights. But now, because I've had a few bad experiences, I definitely want to do it myself. I've had yeah. instances where they've actually booked it in the, the, the admin girl who booked it. She booked it in her own name. Yeah. Flight didn't even exist for me. Yeah. Uh, when I've wanted to change flights, I've had dramas. So now I just want to do it myself and I want to pay the extra for Qantas. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. And number 10. Not treating conferences as a beneficially, mutually beneficial relationship. What's your story there? I'm not sure if I understand. Well, exactly actually, when I means. first read that I point, remember. I thought he was trying to get to, um, he was just wanted 10 points. And at first I read it and I thought, oh, he just wanted another point there. <laughs> What's it about? But the, the more I think of it, like if, and I don't know if you know what it's like to be a speaker at your event, but you've got, um, You've got Charlotte that walks around and she makes you feel special. She puts a big smile on your face. You're the big boss and you make things happen. And then Shastri runs around. She's a little feedback gatherer. She runs around. She says, what, what's happening here? Are you happy here? She's continually asking yeah. questions. And I don't know what happens behind the scenes, but all these problems get fixed. Maybe she goes to you and these yeah. things happen. But she's always taking feedback the whole way along. 
I don't see that happen in other conferences. Yeah, and we've got Henrietta obviously on the info, info booth, giving information to all attendees and everything. So it's, is that kind of, what was the question again? Like mutual well, beneficial? Yeah, how, how about that? I say it another way, Jacob? Um, in, in a, in, like, there's a lot of conferences out there and they're always fun. Every, every guy like me wants to go to a conference. They're fun, yeah. okay? But sometimes we don't have a good experience. And the reason we don't is almost always a different reason at a different conference. Yeah. There's so many different ways. You can get annoyed about a bad connecting flight. You can get uh, annoyed about um, uh, just the, the hotel you get or, or different things like that. Um, AV problems, you know. So it's always a different thing. And you want to know, I have never spoken at a conference where they actually do a retrospective after and they get feedback from the speakers and you to do a good conference and you do a good conference you have to get a lot of a lot of things right but maybe you're getting it right through luck or through good management yeah, yeah. something like that yeah I don't really know how to respond to that but it's uh, we, we try to make you know our speakers attendees everyone who attends the conference right mm. make them feel at home and we don't want to be like this big corporate uh, or feel like a corporate conference I want to feel like a community conference and everybody's welcome and taken care of and try to have a personal relationship with all the attendees if it's possible right so we're all we're all participating in the conference together but if that answers the questions I think it's a really good idea to have a retrospective with the speakers yes I don't think we actually do that no you don't but that's Nobody something does. we should that's mm. something we really mm. should do and that's, that's something yeah we should implement well, for you've the got she she's getting all your feedback she's getting that. all the feedback uh, but obviously you want to get everyone's feedback yes. and not just a few people mm. that you you speak with we obviously have com continuous conversations about how to get things right all right, with that, thank you, Jacob. And this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.